Hey everyone, my name is Shanice and welcome back to my channel. I am here to recommend a few summer books um, that I think are just befitting of the season that we're in, the scorching season that we've entered. This is a mixture of books that I have read and I think fit the season, but also a few books that are on my current summer TBR list. So the first book that I'm actually going to recommend is one of those TBR picks. This one came out I think last week. Um, but from what I've heard, how it's been described by publications, and just the summary of the novel, it just is perfect for the summer. I don't know why, but the summer months to me are perfect for mystery novels. Um, I love a literary mystery, a literary psychological thriller, um, and it seems like this is that. And it's also a bit of a chunky book, so like, uh, I'm gonna take a week off work in at the end of this month and my plan is to read this book ev enjoy every second of it. Um, so <laughs> the book in question is The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. Um, I'm gonna read you the summary and tell me this is not a perfect like summer hot mystery book. Um, okay the summary says early morning August 1975 a camp counselor discovers an empty bunk its occupant, Barbara Van Lahr, has gone missing. Barbara isn't just any 13-year-old. She's the daughter of the family that owns the summer camp and employs most of the region's residents. And this isn't the first time a Van Lahr child has disappeared. Barbara's older brother similarly vanished 14 years ago, never to be found. As a panicked search begins, a thrilling drama unfolds, chasing down the layered secrets of the Van Lahr family and the blue-collar community working in its shadows. Moore's multi-threaded story invites readers into a rich and gripping dynasty of secrets and second chances. It is Liz Moore's most ambitious and wide-reaching novel yet. And from the reviews here, you know, The God of the Woods should be your next summer mystery. Um, it just, it's perfect. It's perfect for the summer. Um, I guess a lot of us have more time during the summer to grab a longer book. Um, something about a mystery, like I said, just fits the summer vibe. I don't know what it is, but this is like, I need to check this out immediately. Um, I am on the wait list at my library, but if I don't get off the wait list within the next two weeks, I'm just gonna buy it physically because um, I need to read this book. Next is a book that I finished earlier this month, um, so I won't review it in depth until the July wrap up, um, but it is called All Fours by Miranda July. Now this one doesn't necessarily take place in the summer, um, but I'm kind of going at this more in a thematic way. Um, I feel like in the summer, because like I said, we have more time, those of us with the opportunity to travel um, or to just take time for ourselves, I know that's a privilege, so I know not all of us are able to do that, um, but for a lot of people generally, it's a time of rejuvenation and replenishing the system if we're lucky. Um, and so this book features a main character who is kind of doing that. She's taking a road trip across country from LA to New York. Um, she's kind of like a semi-famous author, not really, um, but kind of. And she's using this money that she's getting from a recent copywriting gig um, to kind of fund her road trip. And through this, she discovers herself, her sexuality, her interests. She learns truths about her marriage, about who she is, who she's attracted to. It fits that kind of rejuvenating, curious theme. Next is another book on my TBR. And yet again, this is a book that came out literally last week and I'm on the wait list at the library. What is new? But this is State of Paradise by Laura Vandenberg. Um, I've read Isle of Youth by Laura Vandenberg. She has a, she's very unique, um, creepy settings. There's something about her writing that's always like damp and humid. Um, she is from Florida, I believe, and a lot of her stories take place in Florida. What is summer if not Florida? <laughs> so what I know about this is that it is set in Florida. Um, in a small town in Florida, this weird disease has been infecting people in this small town. During a rainstorm, the main character's sister mysteriously disappears and then a few days later comes back 
talking about a different dimension, a different world. And according to the summary, a sticky, rain-soaked reckoning with the elusive nature of selfhood and storytelling, Laura Vandenberg's State of Paradise is an intricate and page-turning whirlwind. With inimitable control and thrilling style, Vandenberg reaches deep into the void and returns with a story far stranger than either reality or fiction. So this is like not a steaming hot summer, but like a wet rainy summer that's cloudy and like crime ridden and weird and uncanny and fabulous and very Laura Vandenberg. So I'm definitely gonna pick this up when it's also rainy, when it's sticky and I want another mystery. So this one is absolutely on my list and I please please hope that i'm off the wait list as soon as possible next up i am recommending the little friend by donna tart i read this years ago but one of the most vivid things about this was how hot the setting felt and it's a mystery i feel like the southern gothic infuses itself into this book um, and southern gothic to me is very summer. This book is told through the perspective of Robin. She is extremely precocious if not kind of annoying. Um, she is sort of like scout in To Kill a Mockingbird um, but like a little annoying. <laughs> and so she lives in Mississippi with her family and about 13 years prior her younger brother was found hanged on a tree in their backyard um, and that crime has never been solved. Um, and so Robin in present day is determined in her young age to find the killer or the killers of her brother. So this does explore race and class in the south and it's heavy on description. I feel like if you know Donna Tartt, you know Donna Tartt. She loves a long very descriptive, almost Dickensian length sentence. I know for a lot of Donna Tartt fans, this book is maybe their least favorite in her bibliography. I actually liked it. Um, I don't hate this book like a lot of other people do. Um, I do love Southern Gothic. I do like a little mystery, a bit of sociological tinge to my literature. So I highly appreciated this book um, and again if you want a hot very warm very sunny kind of setting it's Mississippi um, then I think you would appreciate this. Another book I'm gonna recommend is a short story collection called Milk Blood Heat by Dante L. Moniz and this is set in Florida. We are in the perspectives of many many characters of varying age um, we explore violent traumatic events in each of their lives. The kind of darkness of childhood and human connection and race and womanhood and sexuality and secrets. And yes, a lot of these, because they're in Florida, are set in the heat, um, as the title will suggest, but it's also like the heat of passion, the heat of racing thoughts, of trauma, of desire. So it's temperature in many ways, but I think this definitely would be good to read in the season. Of course, you have Summer by Ali Smith, um, which is one book in her seasonal quartet series. Um, also in similar vein is Summer by Carlo Vicanarsgaard. Um, his is more of a nonfiction, contemplative, <laughs> vignette sort of experience um, with pictures, with paintings, um, not so much uh, a focused plot. There's not really any plot. Um, whereas Summer by Ali Smith does have a tradi more traditional storytelling plot, um, though it is, you know, told by Ali Smith. So her style is very much present in that work. And then my last book on my summer TBR is Diving Pool by Yoko Ogawa. I actually don't know if this has anything to do with summer, but the cover with the blue and obviously thinking of a pool, it just, and the fact that it's three novellas, something about like short fiction also makes sense to me in the summer, like something you could go to the pool and pick up and then, you know, after one short story or novella, you go into the pool and hang out with your friends or something like there's something summary about that um i don't actually think <laughs> that this is like a fun read or a fun time it seems like it explores darkness and kind of the absurd it's sort of nightmarish kind of dreamlike hopefully there's a pool and some sun somewhere in this book um 
regardless I plan on reading it this summer and I'm crossing my fingers that it fits the kind of mood of the season. And then just for some fun the other book that I'm gonna recommend now I like rereading certain favorite books all the time um, and the one book in this series that I always remembered for the heat wave that takes place at the beginning of the book um, is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Obviously I would be recommending this to people who have already read the series because like why would you start the series in book five but you know I feel like Harry Potter for me the books I, I mean I'm old enough to have been alive when the books were actually being published. This book in particular was the first that I ever like pre-ordered and like got for my birthday because they always came out in July and my birthday's in July and so it was always perfect and so this just has a lot of nostalgia linked to it. And yeah, Harry in the beginning, there's an immense heat wave happening in Surrey. Um, and yeah, he's kind of hiding in the bush, listening to the TV um, from inside the Dursley's house. And yeah, that's very vivid for me. Harry Potter is forever linked to me with summer, my birthday month, and casual reading. So if you also are a fan of Harry Potter, I think this is a, a perfect summery vibe Harry Potter to read. And those are all of my recs. Um, I'm sure as the days go by I'll probably think of more to recommend. Maybe I'll do a part two of this video. Um, and of course, you know, throughout the summer in my monthly wrap-ups I will definitely be reviewing the three, I think, books on my summer TBR that I included here. Um, so, you know, just stay tuned with my monthly wrap-ups just to check in to see when in fact I did get to those. And yeah, let me know if you have any books on your immediate summer TBR reading list. And yeah, other than that, I will see you all next time. I hope you're enjoying the summer so far. I certainly am not because of the unbearable heat wave that's happening uh, in the New York tri-state area. Very unpleasant. Um, but hey, at least I'm alive, right? Other than that, I do really hope you guys are enjoying your summer so far and I will see you all next time. Bye.